Hey, Scruffy. How you doing? Wow. Some vigorous meow. Yeah, so can you smell the smelly fish? Yeah. You're hungry for the smelly fish, huh? Yeah, you're already backing away from the door. You want that smelly fish now. Don't want to wait. Yeah, okay, well, I'll bring it out. So put some extra kibble in your uh, bowl today. Since you seemed hungry last night. Water and his water bowl was almost empty this morning, so it may have been raided again. It wasn't knocked over or moved or anything, but it was cold, so I don't think he's drinking that much water. It could be, but yeah, it seems excessive. So I think there may be another animal that's stealing his water, or sharing his water. Okay, I'm going to sit down. Okay, do you want to stretch first? So the weather is really crazy. So we went from heat wave and then immediately dropped 40 degrees. And then, yeah, today it jumped up about 20 degrees. So and it's amazing going to such extremes and basically you know overnight it's uh i don't know what's going on so today was actually pretty nice uh i wish the weather would be kind of about this all the time it cooled down a little faster uh than i expected so it actually kind of got chilly this afternoon late afternoon and that's when i went out for my bike ride so it's actually a little cold in some points, but not that bad. Once you work up a sweat, don't notice it as much. So, um, yeah, I was thinking I'd take a recovery day or something today, but the weather was so nice. Said, so, nah, I gotta go out. Though I think the weather is actually supposed to stay like this for the next five days or so. I'm not sure, and so it may jump around another 20 degrees. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure what's going on. And oh, I'm jumping around the. Uh, I mean, uh, it's gonna go down 20 degrees. So we're not gonna get any heat waves in the next five days. But we may get some cold waves, which uh, very surprising. They're not really cold, but you know, so it's not like snow or anything like that. But <clears throat> um, cold enough that yeah, you probably need heavier clothing. But I'm ex still expecting our extended summer, so <laughs> it's kind of funny that we're talking about a. Uh, heavy clothes when I'm still also talking about uh, heat waves. <laughs> I really like that uh, neck rub there. So I, I did go out my bike ride a little bit earlier than normal, though I actually left a little too uh, late. I, went, I probably should have left a little earlier. Um, because it was already starting to cool down a little much, and I probably could have gotten a little more sunlight. 
but I was a little busy and I was also debating the sun intensity. So the UV index when I left was actually only five and you know, a week ago it was probably going to be eight or nine at the same time. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Uh, but so if it was that low at that time I think it was probably low all day so I probably could have went out earlier but that's okay it's kind of a quiet ride today didn't see that many people I think the colder weather is keeping everyone indoors even though it was actually really nice. But I think maybe everyone was expecting uh, yesterday where it was actually, it was kind of cold. <laughs> so as I uh, went through the, the pedestrian entrance of the park that I normally bike at, there was a big deer right off the edge of the trail. It was just standing there in the brush, right on the edge of the trail. And I didn't even notice it, it was so still. And as I got really close to it, then I suddenly noticed it and basically it was just watching me, turning its head. And I thought, wow, this is like an animatronic at Disney, one of the Disney parks. It's just kind of unreal. It was just so calm and stationary, but moving and you know, look, you know, lifelike. Of course, yeah, this was a real deer, but <clears throat> I'm just not used to you know being able to get that close to a deer without it, you know, bolting much uh, sooner. This one was very calm, with the exception of Nara in Japan. So that's the one exception to the deer rule. So if you haven't been to Nara, Japan, um, it's probably the most, one of the most unique places in the world. They're definitely the most unique when it comes to deer. It's yeah, unique. Um, so in Nara, the deer are sacred, and uh, basically the deer have learned that they are sacred <laughs> and so they um, are not afraid of humans and they've actually learned how to bow their heads to ask for food and so they actually come right up to people and uh, are basically uh, begging, begging for food and yeah they're not afraid and uh, it's amazing um, they're actually a little aggressive too so if they know you, you have some food um, I got, I, I bought, so they have like vending machines all over the place where you can just buy food and they got little street vendors also that sell deer food. And, um, I bought some and, uh, the deer saw me buy the food and then they swarmed me <laughs> and they surrounded me and, um, then they started headbutting me. So, um, cause they formed a circle around me. And so as I faced some, the ones behind me, um, rammed me and butted their, uh, their heads on my back trying to get me to drop the food or something or give them the food. Whoa, <laughs> pretty aggressive. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny how uh, they're not afraid of anything. But yeah, today, yeah, that deer was nowhere near as aggressive, but I was impressed at just you know, how calm the deer was as I passed by. And then there was, let's see, on a, one on the hill climb, number one, on the exposed mountainside, and yeah, it was cool today, and the sun intensity was low. Sun was in my eyes, even though it was still a little early, but it was starting to set. But as I was going down the, the mountain, yeah, there's a small group of quails that appeared on the trail. And one of the quails ran off the, or ran down the edge of the cliffside onto the trail and was running ahead of me. And he was uh, keeping ahead of me. I was, wow, it's kind of 
thinking, wow, that quail can run really fast. It's like a roadrunner. They didn't realize they were that fast on their feet. Because you, you'd think normally a bird, if it wants to get away, it would just, you know, fly. But, uh, yeah, this bird was actually kind of keeping pace with me on, on, on you know, running. Looks funny, weren't you know, quail looks funny running too, but it's impressed with how fast they were. Finally, it caught up with uh, the, big, the bigger group of uh, quail, and then as I got a little closer to them, they all kind of took flight. Okay, so I think you're ready for food, Scruffy, huh? Yeah, I think you're ready. So let's get your food. So there's extra kibble in there tonight with your smelly fish. And there is that purr slurp or whatever. So I think he really likes the food because yeah, he's making a lot of noises recently when he starts eating. So another thing about Japan is it's, it's particularly with ramen I learned. Um, it's considered polite to slurp your food, your ramen. So it's a, a sign that you're appreciating the, the food. So Generally in this part of the world where I live, that's considered rude. <laughs> but uh, in Japan, yeah, it's a compliment. So. <clears throat> now I'm thinking about ramen. That sounds really good. But I can't have any because I'm on a diet. Plus, yeah, ramen's actually really hard to make, except, yeah, I'm not talking about the instant ramen, but like the, the good, good stuff. So, you yeah, should probably talk about the bowl. So, yeah, this morning I woke up kind of early, you noticed from the window that the bowl looked either empty or very close to empty. I couldn't, couldn't tell. But yeah, all the, most of the water was gone. And so I'm thinking there, there may be another animal that's stealing the water. I'm actually starting to think maybe I shouldn't leave the water out because it's just attracting the other animal. But I haven't really decided because if I take it in, then Scruffy won't have any to drink. And I think he does most of his drinking at night. So, so eventually I came out and I uh, filled his water. And uh, then I noticed Scruffy sleeping. Uh, actually, he wasn't sleeping. He was uh, resting uh, near uh, the railing. Uh, in a section where it's real hard to see him if, uh, from the kitchen window because the table blocks the view. So I didn't realize he was out here. Um, he didn't have the terrified look, which I was impressed. Usually when I've been coming out, yeah, he looks like he's going to bolt at any moment. Sometimes he does bolt. Uh, this time he seemed content just holding his ground. I don't... Yeah, he didn't seem overly alarmed. I, I think he was probably a little concerned I was out here, but not like the other days. This, he looked relatively calm. So, <clears throat> I finished refilling his water, and then I just went back in. And then, uh, in a few moments, then I caught him uh, coming up to the water and taking a big, long drink. I didn't bother to record that, as I think, now nah, he's just drinking, and nothing interesting is going to happen. 
and he took a really long drink, and I'm like, thinking, eh, maybe I should have recorded that, since I don't see him taking really long drinks that often, but so whatever. I've seen him drink before. Then suddenly he uh, decides uh, he's going to uh, stop drinking, and at first it looks like he's going to uh, go back to where he was uh, resting, but then he actually picked up the pace, and then uh, actually walked out to the deeper end of the deck towards the railing and start kind of uh, trotting much faster. It wasn't a mad dash, but it was kind of an expedited uh, walk. And it looked like he was homing in at the that little mouse or vol hole or whatever I found. And uh, I my my suspicion was he may have sensed a small animal and was hoping to pounce on it. And so he walked up to the railing and then it looked like he was watching in, inten intensely at the towards kind of where that mouse hole or vole hole or whatever, gopher hole or whatever that thing is. Um, and then I said, okay, I'm going to get the camera. Fortunately, by the time he got the, I got the camera, he uh, jumped through the railing and he was on the ground. And from that angle, or from that distance, you can't really see anything. You kind of make the back of his body. But he was just continuing to look in that direction a little bit closer, but nothing was happening. So eventually I just kind of stopped watching him. I don't know if he actually caught, caught anything or not. I hope he did. I'm supposed to take care of my rooting problems. But he seems kind of hungry tonight, so I'm thinking maybe he didn't get the get the rodent. I was thinking it could be a bird too, but I think the birds would have saw him, so I think the birds probably would have flown away. So I think he was hoping maybe something was coming out of a hole. Yeah, he finished pretty early. Yeah, I think he's hungry tonight. So, I know the feeling. I'm actually hungry today for some reason. I'm snacking too much. My stomach's been growling. And, uh, my bike ride my yeah, stomach is growling. Looks like he's taking off. Not completely, but uh, oh yeah, completely. Okay, that's a change. Oh well. I don't mind. I want to go in, so it's a good place to stop. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.